through many different stages. Your work is about landscape, but also recently you're more working with natural disasters that have yeah. been happening. So, yeah. you want to elaborate a bit on that? Sure. Um, so, so my work really is a dual work. So there's this work, which was the first work, and the and the work over there. Um, there, I don't know if you can see any constants in the work, um, but. Said. And by the way, thank you for coming to this talk. It's really great that you're here. Um, so, uh, Caroline was talking about my history. Yes, I am a painter and I do work within the landscape realm. This work is quite a step away it materially from painting per se, and it was really nice to come down from listening to Jo's discussion about her painterly approaches. Because if you pare away the materials that are in this work, there are all the elements of painting that exist. So in terms of the paint, there's paint, there's opacity, there's transparency, there's overlapping, there's um, um, the the format, which is you know what is what a painting is contained in. Um, but I've taken all of those elements and I've pushed them out into the space a bit. I think because. Um, for me, walking in the landscape is um, the starting point for most of the work that I do. And as Caroline said, I'm very attracted to, quite by accident, uh, landscapes that have blatant histories or, or hidden histories. Um, uh, so whilst the work is not specifically relating to a site in this instance, it's a, it's a, an, a, a, a what's the term? It's a, it's an accumulation, if you like. The duration of my practice is where this comes through in, in this work in particular. So whilst you walk through the landscape, um, there's all sorts of things going on in your walk. You know, you, you, you're trying to keep your feet on the path. You're trying to keep your cam the camber, so you're adjusting to the camber of a walk through, um, say, native, a native or a, an un... Um, an unmarked track. You're you're being you're moving yourself through leaves, branches, things are falling on you, you get attracted to certain things that you see, there's the sky. So I think I've taken that on in this work and try to make it about a physical entry into the work. I want it to be a f even though you can't, <laughs> it is about the physical nature of being so being in the present. Um, yeah, you say being in the present because I, I find it really quite, it's, it's a very minimal, it's a very minimal piece and um, um, it, it's almost like a, an, an, a, a zen experience of a landscape. Is, is that sort of what you try to... Well, there is a, dis a distillation yeah. of the landscape when I talk about bringing my history of walking and over the years and dealing with paint and the problems of painting. Yeah, there's a distillation of those um, elements that are working in this work. Um, but on a deeper level, the, the veil says something about the inability to access through. So the veil pushes you back out into this space that doesn't really have much, you don't have much connection to, like there's no sense of belonging in the space. Um, and with this work, that work becomes an imprint. So it's further removed from the experience of, in my case, dealing with the elements of painting through the, the, the muse, if you like, of walk, walking through the landscape. And the depth that I'm referring to is my connection with the landscape and the difficulty that I have as um, non-Indigenous within the landscape. I don't 
I, can't, I don't have those. I, to deal with the Australian landscape as, a, as an artist is loaded. You cannot deal with the Australian landscape in, that, in a way that is mine to take or, or whatever. It's, it's complicated, very complicated. And I think that, can I say also, you talk about the Zen. I, I increasingly am dealing with a, a grief in that way. There's, um, yeah, but just getting back to the veil, and that is actually an imprint of what's going on here. So, um, and that references that. So again, it's, it's further removed from the experience of, of, of being present within the landscape. Um, it's, it's, it's a challenging piece, I think. Uh, and, and this is what we try to achieve in the in the, in the Biennale to, to to have works that um, yeah that make you think. And do you find it helpful to know what is behind it, to know the story? Because yeah, yeah. I'm quite interested in your use of the veil. Type yeah. Because the veil is quite a loaded textile in its own way. You know the whole idea of virginity and all these sorts of different things, but also the idea of haze in the landscape. You know, how quite often you visually can't see what you're looking at properly. You've yes. answered the, you've actually answered the, 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 the raison d'etre, yes. which is the inability to, to be within that space. Yes. And it's, I call it a space. It, I, it's not a place. Yes. It's, it's nowhere. It's sort of a no... I'm not going to use that colloquialism, but there is a place of, of, of non-existence there that I am referencing. So, um, and, and I think that's that's the the desire is to step into that, but the work really does reference the inability to do that. So you are sitting within a liminal space, of which is not here nor there. So, because um, it's quite a statement to to work as an artist like that and really be aware of 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 your being here in this country, like I, I come as a as a second, um, yeah, I, I come as an immigrant and I had major troubles connecting with the land for various reasons. But I guess for maybe for you, you've been there a little bit longer, more generations. Um, do you find it as, a, as an artist important to, to play that role and uh, to, to, to verbalize that uh, in, in your work? To make that uh, apparent to, to the public that uh, they should maybe consider walking this land in a different way? I don't really know whether that is the direction that my work moves in because okay. you talk about Zen and that there is a degree of um, aesthetic about the work. I could be a lot more straightforward uh, in, a, in a blunt way, but my first attraction, of course, is working, is being within the landscape. Mm. It's very much inherent in my upbringing as well. Um, but my history is complicated in terms of having convict history. And so I, as I grow older and grappling more and more with what kind of footprint my uh, ancestors took through that. I don't know if you know the you know, um, Secret River by uh, Kate Grenville. Well, you know, there's, in a, in a visual way, I'm trying to talk about th th that complicatedness. Mm -hmm. um, and it's great to have the opportunity to really talk about that. But I think that the, the did you get back to Chris's question about the veil? Uh, it is. It is. It is certainly a loaded for, uh, material that, hopefully, when you get over the, or when you can step into the idea that this is a landscape that has been picked apart, mm. right? But I'm still dealing with painting because I'm staining and I'm using canvas and I'm dyeing and I'm. Um, suddenly there's this veil, there's this need 
visually for me to step back from it. So to bring in the, to bring in the tool um, offers me so much more to 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 deal with. Um, not to mention the shadows that are being cast on the wall. I mean, those things are really crucial when I'm looking at the work. And in fact, as you walk around it, the light picks up on um, different um, warp, I guess, and weft of the tulle, which is mm. quite critical, to to contributing to this this can I say closed shop in a way? This block. Uh, to dealing with the landscape. Um, yeah. Does anyone have any questions regarding? Well, I think it's really interesting you talk about the complicatedness of it and the themes seem quite kind of serious but then the work is really quite beautiful and light and um, almost, I, I'd say, playful, like I guess the landscape is. And like you say, as you walk around it, um, you reveal different, you know, just even the, the ripples in the, it, it reference, you know, that's how you, when you move through a, a landscape space, you can see different things because trees and the whatever kind of moves around with you. Um, so I think that's an interesting cont contrast. How do you... What do you think? What do you think about? I'm, 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 I'm hearing what you're saying. I, I, I feel that um, my practice is moving further and further into the space that that um, the work occupies, and I think I, 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 I want the I want the audience to have a slightly different experience with my work, and and so you talk about yes, I mean of course they are very. They're very light in colour and almost ethereal. Mm -hmm. And I do think that that is part of the experience when you are, you know, doing a derivé through the landscape or you, you're walking and you're finding phenomena, encounters within the landscape that are, are yeah, gone in an instant. Mm -hmm. So there's that sense of um, uh, not, being, not being the centre of the... Of the Universe, you are not the the person that's with you. Are not the the controller of that space. So I suppose that with this work, it's I know that when people walk through and they look at it from this angle as they're coming, it's a different experience to this angle. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that I didn't want that work to be anchored to the wall with a stretcher. Yeah. I wanted it to contain that shadow, which references this work. But I wanted it to be very. Um, well, materially very um, light and tonally light and almost not there kind of light. Yeah. Um, I feel it's a very feminine and sensitive landscape that take, takes you into more like a dream state when you view it. I, I feel like I could be dreaming that. Mm -hmm. um, because the tool makes you float between the layers and, and, and the way the light interplay. So, you know, my, my mind just wants to float in and out and through the piece as if, as if yeah. it was multi-dimensional. And then, then that's just opposed against the beautiful sculptural piece. Um, and, you know, that's just this sensitively worked you know, and it's quite beautiful as well. You know that that's not my work oh, in the centre. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so really, the works are only talking. Oh, that. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah. Well, I, what has been said of my work often is that people want to enter into the into the two dimensional surface and walk through it. So you're saying something very similar, I think, yeah. to what other people have observed about my work. So it's performative, yes. you know. I think that you know when you're in the studio, these all these elements are all lying around on the on the floor. You must have a big studio. I have a tiny studio, <laughs> and <laughs> it's just messy. Um, but there's something that's been said about truly creative people work within a mess. Yes, I, I, I can that there. relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, so these, these elements are, are, are everywhere in my studio. And then there's this, again, this, being in the studio is this chance encounter as it is within walking through the natural um, uh, landscape where things just present. And then you either pick that up or you don't. And I think that these things, um, you know, they all sit in their own palette or in their own paint pot, in a metaphorical sense. So when I come to the studio, I would choose my palette um, accidentally. It's there, it presents itself. Um, but in this case, um, yeah, I mean, really, it's one, two, three, four elements that are in that work with three colours. Two colours and the canvas if you want to make it so it's three elements in that one too so it is fairly minimal in that respect you're right Caroline mm. uh, do, do you find because you've been painting for a long time or you've been an artist for a long time do you find that your work is becoming more um, closer to an essence of something or uh, does it say something also about you that uh, I'm, I'm just asking because um, uh, say Charles Blackman, where, just before he passed away, his, his art became very. Uh, not not saying that you're you're just about to go, but <laughs> um, you know his work became very minimal, and I see it also with Brian Blanchflower. He's got an exhibition coming up, and his work also he's, he's just going for color now. Mm. Um, yeah. Is that a little bit? Well, I have done works that are, are simply about color, and they're simply about the stain. Oh, that's the other thing I haven't mentioned that these are stains. I don't see them as being applied. I, don't, I haven't used any brushes in this. Mm -hmm. So they're stains. So I, I pour, I, I um, use sponges. I, um, <clears throat> so with the minimal works, I, I have trouble with that word, actually. It's a, it's, a, it's a bit of an art word that I don't necessarily um, fit in. I think that always there's a reference to, to the landscape, but the, the formal, the formal approach in the studio, you know, like, <laughs> you can go so far, I believe, with a, a minimalist pared down, where, in fact, in a way, you might lose your audience. <laughs> mm. um, and, and that's something that I don't want to lose. Mm -hmm. um, although I am talking a lot about the inability or the inaccessibility of being uh, and engaging within the Australian landscape. I mean, I don't just do works relating to the Australian landscape. I've done a number of works about the tsunami that was in mm. Band Arche. Um, Where was this, sorry? In Band Arche. Um, well, there's been a few in Indonesia. Yes. Yeah, yes. That was the 2004 oh, yeah, okay. tsunami, yeah. and then there was the 2011 tsunami uh, <coughs> that um, was actually part of, I think it's called the Pacific Ring of Fire. Yeah. So on the West Coast, as part of Australia, we're also within that Ring of Fire. And uh, so the uh, previous work that I'd done was about that wave. And I'd, um, uh, um, <clears throat> I'd use various materials to, to try and convey that, that, um, that connection that we all have. I mean, it's not that far away. In fact, there were reports that were were made by, you know, fishermen, local people on the beaches, all the way along the coastline, when, in fact, the Krakatoa uh, eruption occurred in 1848, I think, 1848, around that time. And so I suppose, yes, whilst I do, in this area here, these works I've been dealing with, my interest at the moment in the Australian landscapes, in specific landscapes, um, I have done other work that impacts on the Australian landscape um, from uh, uh, the, the interest that I have in both natural and man-made disasters. And of mm. course, the Fukushima breakdown was, a, from my perspective, a really neat thing mm. <laughs> that occurred, uh, which has interested me. So just getting back to the big thing that I said about the landscape as being loaded, it's, it's politically almost untouchable, really, for a non-Indigenous person to be dealing with landscape. 
I did a residency in Iceland uh, last year. Mm. I don't know why, but I did. <laughs> and um, uh, uh, that just that just has compounded that that again because because of the strangeness of that landscape, although, and of course, I have no affinity with that landscape. I have no connection with that landscape in any way, shape or form. So it was a way for me to move outside of something that I feel that I have some minimal connection with through my ancestry here. And just to try and work out, tease out, if you like, where there is any sense of belonging or not. Yes. Yeah. And it was pretty cathartic <laughs> yes, it to be there. Mm. So the next work I'm doing is actually relating my, my um, experiences with the landscape here and with um, my experiences with the landscape mm. there. Great. Do you want to briefly talk about what you did up at Port Hedland? Because that was the landscape focus as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I, I, I was on a residency and I, um, I did a, some uh, research walking through Karajini National Park and um, uh, my, I, I have quite a lot of interest in geology. Uh, my father was a geologist and so that's carried through rocks of kind of something that I'm innately attracted to. And some of these shapes reference rocks as well. But um, yeah, so the, the work that in, in, in Sioux, uh, came about from that experience of walking through the gorges was loosely focused on two things. One was the 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 uh, in the Hammersley. I don't know if anyone's been to Karajini. That's it. So the Hammersley Gorge area. There's a lot of uh, soft um, uh, shale on a sheer rock face that just falls out of the sky almost. Beautiful pink, you know, breakable, very unstable landscape, changing never the same. The other part was through the walk, there of course are these blue seams within the, the sedimentation uh, rock layers and of course that's, um, it's chodolite which is partly um, connected to the Wittenoom line on the other side of Dow's Gorge. So the works that I did juxtapose those two things, that the, that the fact that there was that mine <laughs> on the other side, still with tailings to be seen, and as we know, the, the city's towns closed down and it's highly um, toxic. So too, on the other side, there is this national park that we relish and love and have a great affinity with. And there's that juxtaposition once again. You know, the seams that are in the park, I don't know if you've come up close to them, but they're pretty much at eye level. And um, it's there for everyone to walk past. There are lots of signs up that say, beware, you know, don't inhale near the chocolate. <laughs> But of course, most people just are curious that it is so beautiful. The colour is this cornflower blue. Oh. And of course, I just, again, there's this tension between, oh, I've got to pick that up, but I might just use my mobile phone to lift it with, you know? <laughs> so that tension between that real beauty and attraction and then that, that realisation, whoa, what's going on here? And you have that, you know, that cultural backdrop to um, a, a beauty, that a natural beauty, and then you also have the the tailings that are still there from a mine that's been shut down for how many years? Um, and I think you know that relates to what you were saying about um, the the softness and the lightness of the work. I, there, that is the beauty. But then I hope that there's something else that comes back at you. And I think in relation to what you were saying, Caroline, that that, that is what my work is about. Yeah. And I think it's a slow realisation. My work is not easy to, to pick up quickly. It's not a work that you go, ah, got it, I'm moving on now. And I don't actually want that. Mm. It's a very slow, can I say burn? I don't know, maybe not, but I hope so. Going back to you. 
Do you think that veil is like could be a subconscious thing between you and the landscape? Like as a landscape, you know, just being an indigenous person myself, like you almost feel like there's a, a root going through your feet. And I can understand that people have just such a love for this country and the way it's not and that if you, you sort of don't feel that same like that you can hold it. Oh, uh, are you talking about yeah. sorry. Yeah, about that veil. It's like is that like that's a subconscious thing between you and the landscape itself. I like what you said. I, um, I'm thinking actually about the fact that it doesn't touch the floor. And that was really important to me when I sent thousands of instructions down with the work, that it not be connected to the floor. And actually, I think you've articulated, perhaps right now for me, why perhaps I don't want it to be touching the floor. That's very... Thanks for that. That's all right. Yeah. I think everyone can... Sub, your subconscious when you work and when you paint, whatever you do, it takes such a hold in it. We don't even understand. Like it's right there over there, pulling the strings. Yeah. And then, yeah, it, sometimes it takes other people to point out what, what you've done. <laughs> you know, we yeah. Like, yeah, I agree. I, I, that's why it's so good to, ha to do these talks. And thank you, Caroline, for, for inviting us to mm, do this. It's, um, um, I think through talking, collaborating with each other that you can, you can, it's a better way to be, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think also to make people aware, yeah, you bring more of an affinity then to, to what's, what's happening around you and I think it makes people more aware yeah. of their environment. And that's what art, artists are there for, isn't it? To yeah. see, to yeah. see. And I think you do need to look at, uh, I don't know what your background is in terms of um, your your understanding of art processes and things, but you probably do need to look at what it is that is not there. Uh, you know, if you have the expectation that this will be a painting, then the next step would be let's pick this apart. What is it that's not there that I I I'm well that I'm seeing? What is it that's not there? So. Mm. Because all the elements are there, you know, paint, canvas. <laughs> it's just how it's presented. Mm. Yeah. Cool. The more I've been making art, uh, the longer I've done it, the more I realise that having people in front of it is just as much a part of the process as it is in making it. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing today is actually being a part of the work. Yeah. Some ways as well. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else questions, comments? Oh, thank you, Benny. Thank you. Thank you.